Bonjour. <laughs> My name is Anna Wolf, and I'm pissed off. <laughs> I'm pissed off because I'm an artist. Artists are not dirty. They don't smell. They don't hate money. They actually want to make money. They find it really hard to selling their own art. Artists also aren't all obsessed with fame. We all don't think that we're going to go viral on YouTube or make it in Hollywood. Some of us are actually third generation entrepreneurs. My dad and my grandpa made their living in insurance. And I'm actually on a tech startup right now. And we've developed a music application for Android use in the past six months. I taught myself how to build websites and we're looking for seed investors. This is our second business plan competition in the past year. Today I'd like to change your perception of what an artist is and also change the artist's perception in the audience of themselves. Google, the most widely used search engine in the world, defines an artist as a person who creates paintings or drawings as a profession or hobby. Frankly, this definition is completely ridiculous. And if you ask any artist if this definition accurately describes them, even as a painter or drawer, they'll laugh at you. How does this tie into being an entrepreneur? Oxford University Press defines an entrepreneur as one who manages or assumes the risk of a business or enterprise. I'd like to emphasize here the risk-taking behavior. Every time an artist creates a piece of art, they're taking a risk, and I'll explain why a little bit later. Today we're going to talk about this concept of an arts entrepreneur and why these two words fit together magically and are actually not an oxymoron. This is a word that we use a lot in the program, in the minor, and the student organization that I co-founded on campus. EMA, or Entrepreneurs Marketing the Arts, seeks to teach students how to run their art as a business and give them the basic business skills necessary to get out there and get their art on the market. These are a few of the all-stars from our program, and this is us at the end of a business competition last year. The problem faced by many artists today is that they don't have the basic business training necessary to get out there and pursue their ventures entrepreneurially. We're constantly faced by these stereotypes given to us by society and the mainstream media that we're crazy or weird. And this is just not true. Often, people think that artists are unfit for real jobs or unreliable or flaky even. And in reality, most artists can't sustain themselves just by putting art out there on the market and trying to price it. Lack of confidence, overconfidence, all the common misconceptions of artists generally come from this lack of training. I mean, if you don't know what you're doing and you're not confident in it, who's to say that you're able to price your own artwork? <laughs> Finally, I think the biggest misconception about artists is that we're all obsessed with making it big, or getting on Broadway, or going to Hollywood. Also not true. I mean, I know plenty of artists who are out there playing shows every week because they love it. How many of you in the audience are artists yourselves, or maybe even know an artist, or close to one? This is a majority of you, and I'm sure most of your friends, or the people in this audience, don't have any am ambition to make this your lifestyle. But today I'd like to demonstrate why it could be a lifestyle, and why it's possible to support yourself in this way. We're reinforcing these stereotypes by not giving artists the tools that they need. On the business side of things, creative capital, innovation, these are terms that are thrown around loosely all the time. I'm sure you've heard them if you're in the startup world. And while all of these are necessary for the progress of fields like technology and marketing and anything like that, you can't teach creativity. There are plenty of people that are creative where you can you know, refine this creativity and cultivate it, but we're wasting our time if we're trying to force everyone to become a graphic designer or you know, come up with these brand new ideas that maybe is just not their area of expertise. We're rewarding people like Steve Jobs because he's this innovative entrepreneurial thinker, 
but we're punishing artists by saying that it's weird to be too creative. Why is this? Marketing, advertising, graphic design, these fields are often ones that artists are actually pushed into. You know, I get the question all the time, why don't you just become an, a graphic designer? And it's, it's funny to me because in reality, if, if artists had the ability to get out there and market and sell this idea or product in a creative way, why couldn't they do this with their own artwork if they already knew how to do it? When an artist creates a piece of art, they're creating an experience for someone. And this is what companies are trying to imitate today. You know, every time that you walk into a Starbucks, there's an entire experience surrounding your cup of coffee to try and sell you that experience. And I think we need to start focusing on teaching artists how to do this for themselves when it comes to getting their own artwork out there. Creative capital is becoming a commodity. And it's something that we truly cannot teach. As a member of a startup myself, I feel comfortable in saying startup is the new hipster. I hope I don't offend anyone by saying that. If it's so trendy to be an entrepreneur, why are we punishing artists for possessing the qualities that we so desire in the business world? How many of you have seen this image before? It said that Oreo won the Super Bowl because during a blackout, an Oreo marketing team comprised of 15 artists actually um, assembled this ad, which went viral. Um, I want to say it got 20,000 retweets and 15,000 likes on Facebook within 10 minutes. Um, this is prefaced by a, a blackout during the Super Bowl this year. The ability to think on your feet and create something creative like this that attracts that many customers, that's something that you can't teach. And if we use artists as a source for creativity instead of you know, trying to punish them or, or teach it to people who aren't naturally that way, then maybe we can have more successes like this in the business world. There's a clear solution here. It's teaching artists how to be entrepreneurs and how to start viewing themselves as entrepreneurs. It's to stop imposing these stereotypes on artists and reward them for taking risks. How many of you have heard of Jackson Pollock? So he was this crazy guy who started splatter painting a wall one day. And this was a risk, sure. Plenty of people probably thought he was crazy, but he made a lot of money off of it. In the same way, artists are doing this every single day. And if we teach them how to turn art into money in this way and kind of create a system of this, Maybe this can be a sustainable life instead of you know, this paradigm where artists are constantly starving. I want you to, again, picture your friend or yourself. And ask yourself, first, do you look like this? <laughs> I'm thinking probably not. If your friend, or even you, is doing a good job of this and are able to sustain themselves and turn art into money, on a daily basis, then they're doing this right. But if not, they might need to start considering themselves as more of an arts entrepreneur. It's time for us to all take action. Whether this means you're an artist and you're pursuing your art professionally and maybe you need some more sophisticated training, or you're a business and you're hunting for creativity where it can't be found. Maybe it's time for us to all change our perception of artists. Don't feed the starving artists. Teach them how to put food on the table. Thank you.